what's good Josh your boy Ross back at it again with another video so we're gonna check out 10 classic matches that save terrible WWE pay-per-views we've all seen at some point an awful pay-per-view produced by WWE and there was that one match or maybe two couple matches that saved the pay-per-view but it's usually that one match that ultimately helped the pay-per-view made it a lot more enjoyable and it's usually the main event sometimes it's in the middle of a card sometimes it, it may be at the beginning of the card but it's usually towards the end in the in the main event and a good match a fantastic match can overall change your score in rating a pay-per-view on a scale of one to ten it has for me plenty plenty of times so i want to say the one thing that comes to me instantly I would have to say if you guys remember WrestleMania 31, which was a it was a solid WrestleMania, but I didn't think it was nowhere as good as WrestleMania 30. And what saved WrestleMania 31 for me was the Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns match, how entertaining it was, and then Seth Rollins cashing in. It had the fans just amped and hyped up. It saved that pay-per-view. It was some highlights. In, you know in that pay-per-view for WrestleMania 31 but to me it saved it and people remember it fondly because of the triple threat match so but we're gonna get right into this appreciate all the love and support road to 60k and uh let's see what Cultaholic uh can come up with It might be slightly different in the WWE Network slash Peacock era, but back in the day when you had to fork over quite a few dollary dues in order to see them, fans expected WWE pay-per-views to be worth the money. This that usually true. meant that several of the matches had to be of real quality, at least much better than what could be viewed on free TV every week. Yep. Anyone who has seen more than one order-only WWE show knows that they're not always a sound investment. This is true. In fact, they're sometimes a little bit... Oh, what's that phrase again? Oh yeah, there's sometimes absolute bollocks. Now, Bro. rarely will a show be top to bottom 100% awful. There's usually at least one match that stands out and makes you feel like you haven't been swindled out of your hard-earned cash. Mm -hmm. We've all heard of the term one match show and throughout WWE history, there have been a bunch of them. If that one match is a certifiable classic, it can save even the dreariest pay-per-view and live long and strong enough in the memory that you forget about the rest of the hogwash that surrounds this is why i say wrestlemania 31 it it, it falls in that category for me um i think a lot of people remember that pay-per-view just off the main event alone because it was actually enjoyable people weren't looking forward to the brock and roman reigns uh match only because they were kind of forcing roman reigns you know down our throat at the time but people were enjoying it it was arguably well it was the match of the night and like I said, Seth Rollins cashing in made that pay-per-view memorable from that one match. It. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are 10 classic matches for views. Join us. Number 10, The Shield versus Cody Rhodes and Goldust at Ooh, Battleground 2013. Yes. Battleground was 2013 was a bad show where nothing really seemed to click properly. The opener between Rob Van Dam and Alberto Del Rio got things off to a promising start, even if it wasn't a five-star affair, but just about everything after it was, in one way or another, rubbish. Carly and Santino taking on the real Americans do anything for you? How about Curtis? Yes, he really was Intercontinental Championship. Champion yeah, Axel defending against our truth. AJ Lee and Brie Bella get your juices flowing, do they? <laughs> Not like that, you filthy simpletons. Bray Wyatt <laughs> versus Kofi Kingston was aimless. CM Punk versus Ryback arbitrary, and yeah. Randy Orton versus Daniel Bryan surprisingly unsatisfactory. Mm -hmm. The one positive of Battleground 2013 was this Cody match. Rhodes and Goldust fighting WWE Tag Team Champions The Shield. Yep. Now Rollins and Reigns weren't putting the straps on the line, but Dusty's kids were fighting. 
fighting for their jobs, knowing that if they lost, not only would they be banished, but their papa would lose his position as an NXT trainer too. The Hounds of Justice had been winning everything and yep. were a well-oiled machine heading into the high-stakes contest. The work was good, as you would expect, but the emotion and drama of the storyline put it over the edge. The pinnacle coming when the American Dream himself got involved, yeah. leading to the euphoria of Cody hitting crossroads for the field. Bro, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about Cody Rhodes hitting the crossroads to win the match. Fantastic match, bro. Fantastic match. Definitely something that elevated this pay-per-view. Good win. Number nine, Kurt Angle versus Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam 2003. SummerSlam is supposed to be one of WWE's premier events, an this original part of the so-called Big Four and the biggest party of the summer. Well, the party got rained out and Ants devoured the barbecue in 2003 because that year's SummerSlam was an uncharacteristically dull and disappointing occasion. The biggest letdown was Goldberg's failure to win the World Heavyweight title in- That, to me, was... That was dumb. They had built this man up like a monster just for him to still lose because Evolution got involved, bro. That, yeah, that that was a letdown at that time. The main event, after smashing through most of the field in the Elimination Chamber match, only to succumb to an injured Triple H. Yeah. But other anticipated matches, like Kane and Rob Van Dam's grudge clash and a talent-stuffed four-way US title bout, also failed to spark. Luckily, Brock Lesnar and Kurt Angle were on hand to pick up the slack, having a customarily exceptional wrestling match with the mm -hmm. WWE title on the line. It was also different to their previous ones, as Angle was now the babyface champion, Lesnar the heel aligned with the villainous Mr. McMahon. They beat the hell out of one another for 20 minutes with all manner of suplexes, submissions, and dramatic near falls down the final stretch. And not only that, but it had the right result too, the Olympic hero overcoming interference from the genetic jackhammer to win clean by submission. Number eight, Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan at Fastlane 2015. Right this one is actually a really good one. This one right here, man. Fastlane was a soft substitute for the pure mayhem of the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, if truth be told. The last stop on the road to WrestleMania, the first Fastlane went down in 2015 and offered up a card that looked weak and turned out to be even weaker. Mm -hmm. The opening six-man between the Authority and the odd squad of Dolph Ziggler, Eric Rowan and Ryback was by the numbers Raw Fair. The first major match between Goldust and Stardust was an unfortunate calamity. The Usos and Tyson Kidd and Cesaro sadly underdelivered, as their match was alright but never really got going. Paige and Nikki Bella had to fight indifference for the five minutes they had, Bad News Barrett and Dean Ambrose's IC title meeting was plodding with a crap finish, and Cena vs Rusev was good enough but really just your usual Cena match. Yep. Going on last after the fans had been bored to tears for most of the show, Daniel Bryan tried to fight his way into another WrestleMania main event. It's fantastic, bro. Just... Ah, oh, man, this this made this pay-per-view that much better because we all wanted to see if Daniel Bryan could possibly do do it again. Main event WrestleMania, can he get the job done? People were rooting for him, loved it. An event challenging Roman Reigns with the Big Dog's WrestleMania WWE title shot on the line. These two are very good together, mm -hmm. even on a bad day, but they were excellent here, making me less angry at myself for sitting through Fastlane by having a damn fine, drama-filled main event. Number 7, Fantastic Steve Austin event. vs Bret Hart of at course. WrestleMania 13. Bret Hart was due a rematch with WWE Champion Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 13 before the Heartbreak Kid misplaced his smile, withdrew from the show, and threw booking plans into chaos. Mm -hmm. The Hitman's Plan B was a pretty damn good one, though, taking on a red-hot Stone Cold Steve Austin, but the submission match stipulation looked like it could handcuff them slightly, with Austin himself worried that the match would be a disappointment, especially after the two had produced a blinder at the last Survivor Series. But he needn't have passed because the Texas Rattlesnake and the excellence of execution produced not just a great match, not just one of the best in WrestleMania history, Facts. but one of the best in WWE history, yep. period. Heated, dramatic, and with an iconic finish, it truly was a thing of beauty, capped off with a clever double turn that saw Hart go bad yep. as Austin officially became a hero. Yep, this is how 
surprise booking and going with the hot hand works. So this is how it works. They went with the hot hand and Stone Cold. And this, this is one of the moments that turned him into a face because he didn't tap. Blood pouring down his face. He never tapped. The ref had to call it. That's how you book someone strong. That is how someone gets over because the crowd can only respect it. It's like, bro, he didn't even tap. He didn't tap him. He wasn't going to tap no matter what. I love it, bro. Definitely deserves to be on this list. It should have been main event, really, but unfortunately, yep. that honor went to The Undertaker and Sid, who turned in an overlong snoozer that ended things on a down note. The rest of the card ranged from poor to meh to just about good enough, and outside of Brett and Steve, is rightly remembered as one of the worst manias ever. Number 6. The World Title Six Pack Challenge at Fastlane 2018 Taking place just a few weeks after Elimination Chamber and only a few weeks before WrestleMania, Fastlane 2018 is a pay-per-view that really had no reason for existing. A to be honest with you, Fastlane has always been like a uh, like a pay-per-view that I didn't think needed to be a thing. I think they needed to just focus more on building the storylines to WrestleMania. It didn't need to be a pay-per-view after Elimination Chamber. SmackDown That's exclusive opinion. events, Fastlane pretty much resembled your average episode of the Blue Brands TV show, save for a bustling main event. An unforgettable end to an eminently forgettable show, the six-pack challenge WWE title match that headlined was a modern-day minor classic. AJ Styles defended against John Cena, Sami mm -hmm. Zayn, Dolph mm -hmm. Ziggler, Kevin now. Owens, and Baron Corbin. And the sextet didn't bother warming up and easing into things, deciding instead to go full throttle from the off, the pace maintaining for the 20 20 plus minutes of the mm -hmm. match's duration. There were some excellent multi-man sequences, nail-biting near falls, and importantly, genuine storyline progression on display. Yep. In the end, the phenomenal one retained with a forearm out of nowhere. It was total chaos, and it was just lovely to witness. Elsewhere, Nakamura beat Rusev in an OK opener. Randy Orton and Robert Roode snoozed their way through a US title match. Naomi and Becky Lynch fell to Natalya and Carmella in a match that happened. The Usos and the New Day went to an unsatisfying no contest, and Charlotte beat Ruby Riot in a token title defense. Number five, Rey Mysterio versus Chris Jericho at the Bash 2009. There was nothing great or particularly Damn, American about, about the Bash, the bash a pay-per-view that existed for the sake of existing I and didn't offer too that. much excitement for those that ordered the show, which incidentally wasn't that many people. The star power was there, and on paper, CM Punk versus Jeff Hardy for the World Heavyweight title, Triple H taking on Randy Orton in a three stages of hell WWE title match, and the Colognes defending the tag straps against Edge and Chris Jericho and Legacy all looked solid enough. In execution, however, the action was mostly dull and booking questionable, in particular John Cena's demolition job of The Miz. <laughs> Pulling double duty that night, Y2J put together a mask versus IC title masterpiece with Rey this. Mysterio that, this. outside of The Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels, may have been WWE's best match of the year. A fast-paced wrestling roller coaster that served as a fitting finale to their months-long rivalry, mm -hmm. the stipulations added real stakes and only sought to ramp up the drama with every clever false finish, many of which alluded to previous contests in their series. The finish was genius too, as Jericho went to unmask Ray as he had done previously, only for the master of the 619 to reveal <laughs> that he had a second mask on underneath before yeah. pinning Jericho to win the gold. Yeah, Number 4, that. JBL versus Eddie Guerrero at Judgment Day Ooh, 2004. Wow, going the way SmackDown back. roster was left threadbare Rest in the wake Eddie. of WrestleMania 20 and the post-WrestleMania draft. Lesnar left, Angle and Big Show got injured, and while they had their ranks bolstered some by the arrival of Rob Van Dam and Booker T, the only two real top-tier stars were Eddie Guerrero and The Undertaker. The shallow depth of the roster was exposed at Judgment Day 2004, a SmackDown-only pay-per-view that mostly resembled... Man, I miss Judgment Day, man. Judgment Day was a pretty... just a, It was a dope pay-per-view. You knew you was going to see some wild shit on Judgment Day. 
handled a televised house show. Mysterio and RVD's opener with the Dudleys was fine, but everything after was weaker than a bowl of cat piss. <laughs> Tori Wilson vs. Dawn Marie Part 57, Mordecai's debut match with Scotty Too Hotty, Charlie Haas and Rico tangling with Bob Holly and Billy Gunn, and Chavo trying to get the Cruiserweight title from oh, Jacqueline, <laughs> must have had some fans thinking that they had accidentally tuned in to an extended episode of Velocity. John Cena and Rene Dupree's US title match was decent enough and Undertaker's victory over Booker T just about passable, but the real quality came last as Latino Heat defended his WWE title in an epic bloodbath with JBL. Mm. Obviously, everybody remembers the sheer Ooh. amount of plasma that Guerrero shed that night, Jesus. but the match itself was genuinely gripping. Just buckets of blood. Oh my god, bro. Woo Man, yeah, it definitely got a uh um color it black and black and white man you show that type of you even show a screenshot of the amount of blood eddie was uh losing bro they'll, they'll block your video man Woo. and more than made up for the earlier dross number three sean michaels versus mankind at in your house mind games as bad as things got during now, wwe's this I don't know inconsistent and sometimes outright Probably, terrible new generation era you could always rely yeah, on if I've nothing else one. sean michaels to give you a show often being the show saver as much as the show stopper as a young providing he remembered where he put his smile that is he did it as SummerSlam 1995 in his ladder match sequel with razor ramon he did it in the cell against the undertaker at bad blood 97 and by gum he did it against mankind at 96 is in your house mind games foley hadn't been around but for half a year when he headlined against wwe champion michaels but truly had a breakout performance that night in philadelphia with many of the ecw fans who had watched him years before no doubt cheering him on it was an exceptional contest with a sadly unsatisfying finish but it served as foley's breakout performance while also mm, okay. showing that the flamboyant boy toy could show true grit when the occasion called for it the rest of the show nobody <laughs> needs to see savio vega and bradshaw in a strap match or jose lothario wrestling yeah, Jim Cornette, or owen and davy boy beating out. the smoking <laughs> guns or Mar when this was a thing i was a little kid so i i i don't remember like my mom ever getting buying a uh like a, a pay-per-view at the time it would only be like my uncle on my dad's side. Henry's debut against Jerry Lawler, or for that matter, The Undertaker and Goldust sleepwalking their way through whatever <laughs> the hell a final curtain match is. Number two. <laughs> Undertaker at WrestleMania 27. WrestleMania oh, is this, WWE's yeah, biggest definitely. and most anticipated sure. show of the year, a this way to reward long-term diehards for to be their devotion to the product, while simultaneously being a way to hook casual or even non-fans on their brand of sports entertainment. A great WrestleMania can seriously turn a passive viewer into a lifelong foam finger buying True. member of the WWE universe, while a bad one can potentially turn them off for good. WrestleMania WrestleMania 27 was a shop window that showcased one piece of prime A-grade steak Best in amongst a plate night. piled high Facts. with spam. The filet mignon was, of course, the cracking battle between Triple H and The Undertaker, the mm -hmm. two road-weary warhorses having a brutal no-DQ match that was a worthy follow-up to the Dead Man's WrestleMania yep. series with HBK. From the special entrances to the pounding opening exchanges, right through to the streak-ending yep. teases and inevitable take a win, it was a masterclass in Fantastic storytelling match. and saved the show. Everything else on it was either iffy, mm. just about good, or downright trash. Magic. While Edge and Alberto Del Rio, Rey Mysterio and Cody Rhodes, and Randy Orton and CM Punk all had matches with some quality on show, Lawler Cole, Snooki, and the dodgy main event dragged the show right down. Had it not been for the game and the phenom, it mm -hmm. would be considered one of, if not the worst, WrestleMania ever. Number one, Snooki the Elimination there. Chamber match at New Year's Revolution 2005. Uh, yep. Was New that Year's makes sense. Revolution 2005 a that cursed makes show? Now, now, I haven't dabbled in witchcraft since I accidentally gave myself a micro penis. Don't worry, I'm halfway recovered now. But all signs point to yes. 
In the opener, Eugene blew out his knee as he and William Regal defended their tag team titles against Christian and Tyson Tomko. Then in the second match, Lita blew her knee out oh, wow. early in her title defense against Trish Stratus. Following those blunders, Shelton Benjamin and Maven had two short non-matches. Muhammad Hassan stunk it out with Lawler, and <laughs> then in the match of the night to that point, Kane beat Gene Snitsky in their usual monster battle. It was up to the World Heavyweight title elimination chamber to prevent the event from being a total washout. Luckily, Triple H, Randy Orton, Batista, Chris mm -hmm. Jericho, Chris Benoit, and Edge, with Shawn Michaels as special ref, came through and had yep. a long and grueling scrap for the vacant title. It was yep. a total one-match show on paper, and it turned out to be one in practice, too. But what a match it was, delivering everything expected and more, and ensuring that the WWE crew's trip to San Juan wasn't in vain. No, nah, that was that was actually the earlier elimination chamber matches were actually really great. It wasn't until you started getting into the late twenty tens they started kind of getting a little washed out. They weren't they didn't hit the same. They didn't have the same feel. Like it was just one of those things where it's like, oh, this is just the way you know. It's the 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 road to uh, WrestleMania. This is like the halfway point. But the earlier rest uh, elimination chambers fantastic love those matches they definitely were obviously the matches of the night for a lot of them just questionable booking here and there but comment down below let me know can you guys think of any other matches that you feel like save that particular pay-per-view uh the one i thought of instantly at the beginning of the video is the roman reigns versus brock with seth rollins interfering cashing in his money in the bank so comment down below let me know, know any other matches you can think of that save those particular pay-per-views appreciate all love and support road to 50k i keep saying 50 it's really 60 <laughs> appreciate y'all kicking it with me i'll see y'all on the next one peace